funding opportunities. Uh, with the same document, M2411, where they talked to two agencies about how you implement 2 CFR, they had a bunch of other things about pre-award changes you could make to help out the recipient community. They found that in going through the data, there are 90 billion, yeah, that's not a mistake, billion hours of time to review these documents and comply with these requirements across all federal agencies. Come on, folks, that really makes it an obstacle to be very, very talented people being able and organizations to submit proposals to NSF so, and every other agency. So it also went on to say, in accordance with 2 CFR Part 200, agencies are directed to make funding opportunities as clear and concise as possible to limit their length, complexity, and increase accessibility to proposals, especially organizations with limited resources and underserved communities. So there is also in 2 CFR 200 that goes into effect in October, an appendix one that has a format for a notice of funding opportunity re-solicitation for NSF. We have to comply with that. And so we have figured out we need to do something here. There are things that we could do, yes, to improve our funding opportunities at NSF. So what are we going to do? Again, we truly have a foundation-wide working group that's got everything from senior leadership, deputy assistant director level of our directorates, to people from the equity, people from evaluation, people from program, people from division of grants and agreements, division of acquisition and cooperative support. The entire foundation really is engaged in this process to figure out what are the best ways for NSF to implement this requirement. Some of the things that we've already come up with, um, we have, uh, again, this working group is looking at what can be done in our current system. We are removing sections that are not required. Well, by 2 CFR Part 200, well, we found that we have very much been lockstep all along with that guidance anyway. So there won't be huge sections eliminated because it's, we've been in compliance all along. But we are looking at that. Deleting redundant sections that appear multiple times in a funding opportunity. I'll give you an example of that. We have a summary, we have an introduction, and we have a program description. Tremendously redundant from one to the next. So we want to, number one, we want to get rid of the, not now, these are things we will be doing in 25, getting rid of the introduction. Streamlining. Per the guidance from OMB, what will now be called an executive summary, as well as looking at, at ways of providing guidance to NSF program staff on the development of the program description. Removing or reducing uh, the length of standard board, I probably missed the most important one. Um, I've already said deleting multiple times. But what I also mean by that is you see some of the same language that they got a direct link to the PAP guide, but then they're replicating entire portions of the PAP guide over and over and over again. You don't need it. You need to be able to see what that document is requiring, but because it's 80 pages, you're getting lost in the middle. So we know we can improve this. Not all of ours are, by the way, that long, but we do have some that fall into the longer category. Trying to do more direct links to the PAP guide. Implementing plain language or word counts uh, for certain sections and developing more internal guidance on how to develop certain sections. So we're actually very excited about this opportunity. 